And here we are at Somerset Cemetery. And we're going to investigate. They say that there is perhaps a mass grave of those massacred during the Civil War. on the box yet. Nothing yet. Sounds like a bird is very surprised to see you here. Maybe it's a warning. Sounds like that bird is telling you stay where you are. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Wow. That bird is telling you to stay away. Yes. Goodness. Wow, that is a tough bird. Yeah, it is. That bird is saying, back off. Anything coming through the electronic device? I haven't heard anything. The names on these stones are absolutely eroded. Yeah, you can see where there was a... Yes, yeah. this was inscribed. The stone is weathered, and there is no salvaging the inscription. Whoever is entombed here, it is lost to history. And what have we back here? It's also decayed beyond the point of... Reconciling. Unreadable. Check some of these stones over here. Let's think about this stone. And what happened to that bird? They say that in the field behind this cemetery is where there is a mass grave of soldiers from the conflicts predating the Civil War. There were several major Did you just hear skirmishes scream? from the conflicts predating the Civil War. There were several major Did you just skirmishes hear scream? from the conflicts predating the Civil War. There were several major Did you just hear skirmishes. scream? Yes, a noise from this direction. Over where? I don't know. There's <laughs> there's no houses around here. <laughs> Come take a look at this. Whoa. These are some spooky Halloween ones. This one's fell over. 1872. 33 years old. And look at this little baby one. Yes. Yeah. Which one did you want me to look at? Do you see under this tree? Oh my goodness. You almost would have missed this. I would have definitely missed it. You notice how many of the headstones are, are slumped this way. Yes, yeah, slumped, fallen over. This one, this one is, is just looks like abandoned, like it, it was yeah. swept away in a tornado and landed there. Look at that one. I have never seen a stone like this. This one appears to be sinking into the earth. Almost as it is written in the scriptures that in the end times, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead.
Hello everyone and welcome to a special weekend we have in store for you. Our destination is Paola, Kansas, a small town 25 minutes south of Kansas City. The little community is part of the Kansas City metro area, but it has quite a story all its own. The town was originally called Peoria Village and it was settled in 1827 by Peoria Indians from Illinois and Missouri who were relocated there by the U.S. government. Later in the 1840s and 50s, immigrants from the country of Italy settled just east of town at a place called Somerset, one of whom was an Italian-speaking Catholic priest named Paul di Ponziglione. Father Ponziglione was a great friend to the Peorias and taught them many things like building furniture, gardening, and cooking. Father Ponziglione was a joyful man with a huge heart who loved to laugh and always said to do all things for God's glory. He taught his new friends about cooking pasta, but what he loved most of all was making good wine. And working together, the immigrants and the Peorias cultivated one of the finest wine countries in the Midwest. On the weekends, Peoria Village became known as a racing town. People of all backgrounds would come from miles to watch wild horse and wagon races down the town's main street, like dueling chariots in the movie Ben-Hur. Today, the park and the town square of Paola are still designed in tribute of the wild racing strip days. And it also has a gazebo and statue dedicated to Baptiste Peoria, the leader of the town in the 1800s. The greatest honor came in the late 1850s on the occasion of Father Ponziglione's birthday, when the Peoria people voted to change the name of their village to Paola, which was the town in Italy that Father Ponziglione missed and spoke of so often. This gift was a special gesture of appreciation and friendship. However, not long afterward, a sad and bittersweet day came when the U.S. government ordered the Peoria tribe to pack their belongings and move to a reservation far away. Father Ponziglione and others tried their best to reverse this edict, but the decision was made at a federal level and the tribe had to begin marching. Some time later, people from the Catholic Church who had not heard from Father Ponziglione in a long while went to his home to check on him. But he was gone, along with all his belongings. The only thing left was his Catholic priest collar sitting on a table. It's believed that Paul Ponziglione joined the Peoria's caravan and never looked back. An interesting note, the story of Father Ponziglione was one of many historical subtexts used as source material in scripting the 1990 film Dances with Wolves. Today, the hills of Somerset, Kansas are still known as the finest wine vineyards in all the countryside. A popular spot for weekend travelers, hosting wonderful events like wine tasting and live music. But it's also said to be a haunted spot. At the old cemetery on Somerset Road, those passing by at night have heard loud voices, screams, and even gunfire. This may be connected to the Marais de Sines massacre, which happened south of Somerset, in which a dozen Kansas civilians were murdered by Confederate soldiers while crossing a river. During the years prior to the war, Confederate bandits routinely rode into Kansas and massacred victims, some of whom are said to be buried at Somerset Cemetery. In one bizarre instance, a cavalry of soldiers led by Captain William Quantrill had just finished sacking and burning numerous towns near Kansas City and were on the road to attack Paola next. When from a distance, they saw a group of Native American horsemen blocking the trail. One of the captain's lieutenants familiar with the natives advised Quantrill that this was a fight he did not want. And so, surprisingly, the Confederates turned their horses around and went back, and Paola was spared. 
This account is astonishing and perplexing because by the time of the Civil War, the Peorias were long gone and had already relocated. Who or what the Confederates thought they saw on the road that day is unknown. There are theories and rumors of what causes the haunting of Somerset Vineyards. Some point to the Ursuline Convent of Paola, a gothic stone building full of forlorn and fastidious nuns staring at the lonely moon at night. There is another story that for some reason a farmer used a cattle bumper to scoop away headstones at Somerset Cemetery because he thought they were on his land. What we can tell you is that many of the grave markers are lost, illegible, and eroded. And maybe the ghosts are none too happy about that. It may also have something to do with Somerset being a gangland stomping ground. The Kansas City crime family, also known as the KC Mob, have many hangouts in the metro area, including Harris Casino, the Phoenix Nightclub, and the legendary Last Chance Saloon. But a more secluded and lesser known meeting place for the mobsters is Casa Somerset. A beautiful old world style hotel and vineyard 30 miles from Kansas City and three miles east of Paola. It's something of a quiet resort for the underworld. We must emphasize the mafia does not own or operate the hotel, but they are regular guests and frequent visitors. And this weekend we will be visiting for a Halloween spooktacular. That's right, it's October 31st. So join us as we keep an eye out for ghosts, black cats, or maybe even mafia mysteries. And we're very glad to have you along. And welcome to Castle Somerset. What do you think? It's a Tuscan villa inspired by the Italian countryside. In fact, standing here now, you may feel that it's indistinguishable. Oh, what do you think of the vineyards here? I think you have outdone yourself per usual. <laughs> All right, shall we take a tour of the area? Oh, you have a visitor. <laughs> I have a great pair of knees. Hey, baby. Thank you for seeing her. very exciting. That's you. Came to investigate. This is the greeter. Yep. You wanted to help you look around. The greeter around here. Oh, huh, baby. Oh. <laughs> he raised his paw. Oh. <laughs> he got me. He says. He says, I will not be ignored. Yes. He wanted a pat on the head. And he said, I'm coming with you. Oh. <laughs> There's an area for very tiny people. You know, I, if I was here alone, I'd use this as a jungle gym. <laughs> I'd climb up those rods. <laughs> wow, this guy is hanging tight with you. <laughs> he doesn't want to miss out on the action. I thought once how Theocritus had sung of the sweet years, the dear and wished for years, who each one in a gracious hand appears to bear a gift for mortals, old or young. And as I mused it in his antique tongue, I saw in gradual vision through my tears, the sweet sad years, the melancholy years, those of my own life, who by turns had flung a shadow across me. 
Straight away I was where, so weeping, how a mystic shape did move behind me. And a voice said in mastery while I strove, Guess who holds thee? Death, I said. But there the silver answer rang, Not death, but love. It's like you have a new pet dog. Well, this dog is hanging with you. I don't think he's going anywhere. Is there anybody there, said the traveler, knocking on the moonlit door. And his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest ferny floor. And a bird flew up out of the turret above the traveler's head. And he smote upon the door again a second time. Doom, doom, doom. Is anybody there, he said. But no one descended to the traveler. No head from a leaf fringe sill leaned over and looked into his gray eyes where he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet moonlight. To that voice from the world of men stood thronging in the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveler's call. And he felt in his heart their strangeness their stillness answering his cry while his horse moved, cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leaky sky. For he suddenly smote on the door, even louder, dum, 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 and lifted his head. Tell them I came and no one answered, that I kept my word, he said. Never the least stir made the listeners, though every word he spake fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house. From the one man left away. Yes, they heard his foot upon the stirrup and the sound of iron on stone. And how the silence surged softly backwards when the plunging hoofs were gone. are absolutely beautiful this time of year. There's the sunset. That's wonderful trees. Buon appetito. Elderberry wine. Zinfandel. Middle Creek white. It's like an old wine press. Stock barrel. Hmm. I'm gonna come down here later and do some reading. Yeah. And here we have the Godfather room, which the owners told us has been stayed in by various members of the mafia. They love staying here. Oh my gosh. Can you believe what they have this <laughs> They put a horse's head in the bed. 
Oh, that is too I hope the mobsters think that's funny. Hilarious. The owner told us that the mafia, which has a hub in Kansas City, they like to stay here in this room. These walls could talk. And this is the executive kitchen. Casa Somerset hosts many dinner parties here and other events like weddings, large parties. We have over a hundred guests at a time. Look at the size of this pan. Imagine the dishes I could create in here. I just need the ingredients. Look at this. The squash. From the garden. They have gardens Incredible. here. They use yes, them. large. Every instrument you could want. Beautiful kitchen. And you watch TV while you cook. And we have the winery room. Wonderful view of the vineyard. Love this bedspread, by the way. Yes, I do too. How do I know you're not part of the mafia? You look like somebody would Try to get someone else rubbed out. They call you gangster bear. You'd say, how much to rub someone out? <laughs> and interesting map of Italy here. It shows the different wines in part of the country they're from. Campania, that's fun to say. <laughs> Crimson Cabernet. Nighthawk Winery Moon Dance. Hmm. It says sweet table wine. Sounds so good. And I believe this is the president's room. And come outside for a minute. Come on, I'll show you your room. And if you'll follow me, it's right through here. And this is the Raphael room. And voila! And you'll be staying here tonight. And as you can see, the room is inspired by old, classic days of Italy. And I've got another surprise for you. You have a bathtub with jets. Yes! Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! And... What I can tell you is that it may get scary tonight because just on the other side of that small lake is an old cemetery where people have seen ghosts. I thought we might have a look around because it's Halloween. Bring forth the raisins and the nuts. Tonight all hallow specter struts along the moonlit way. No time is this for tear or sob or other woes our joys to rob. But time for Pippin and for Bob. 
and jack-o'-lantern games. Tis night for revel set apart to reillume the darkened heart and rout the host of dole. Tis night when goblin, elf, and fay come dancing in their best array to prank and royster on the way and ease the troubled soul. The ghost of all things past parade emerging from the mist and shade that hid them from our gaze and full of song and ringing mirth in one glad moment of rebirth and again they walk the ways of earth as in the ancient days. The beacon light shines on the hill, the willow wisps the forest fill with flashes filched from noon and witches on their broomsticks spry speed here and yonder in the sky and lift their strident voices high unto the hunter's moon. The air resounds with tuneful notes from myriads of straining throats, all hailing Folly Queen. So join the swelling choral throng, forget your sorrow and your wrong, in one glad hour of joyous song to honor Halloween. Guys, that is the moon. We're not kidding. And we don't understand what's happening, but that is the moon. It's falling, and we don't know what is happening. Oh it's floating up slowly like a, like a hot air balloon. It looks like a hot air balloon. We don't know how this is happening. That is the moon. Well, this weekend is off to a mysterious beginning, shall we say. A little bit scary. We have the mafia room in the villa. Have uh, some strange dark hallways going on. <laughs> Maybe we'll walk down some of those later. We'll see what happens. We may have to investigate later. But right now, we're switching into dinner mode. And we are on our way to Kansas City for the evening. Right now, I'm getting the feeling, though, that things could get strange tonight. So, you know, hang on to your hats. Something tells me this is going to be a spooky evening. Oh my, what's happening up here? Oh my! Well, that's kind of strange. We saw a giant fire by the side of the road. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a Halloween thing. Maybe it's a bonfire people are gonna, but we didn't see any people though. <laughs> Where were the people? My goodness. You know, it was just like this huge campfire or something, but where were the cars? Where were the people? I don't know, maybe it's a Halloween thing. Maybe some people just getting ready for a great campfire, but where did they go? We didn't even see any cars. And here we are at Johnny's Steakhouse. Shall we? Oh, you bet it does. And I've got the best date in town. That is a fact. All right, let's take a look at this wine menu. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for coming along. Oh, it does, trust me.
You look so handsome this evening, sir. Thank you. I'm thinking about getting spaghetti. Hey, that's a good idea. Really, wow. For someone who threw a fit about that, I'm kind of over it. <laughs> well, I ordered the zucchini sticks. Yes, this is how we dance. I'm in some great lighting. Can I have this dance? Here we go. This is how we dance. Yes. I've seen you chug your hands, so. You what? I have. About tonight's investigation. I don't know that much about the ghosts. We are staying in the Mafia Don's room. We also know that a lot of people have gone missing over the years. Let's just say I put a hit out on this fettuccine. Are you ready? We're ready. Super ghost investigation coming up. Let's, let's go. <laughs> oh no, the ghost trapped us in here. Oh no, the ghost trapped us in here. Oh! Hey. You tried to outrun me. It's chilly. You said it was warm a minute ago. wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. Through these open doors, the harmless phantoms on their errands glide, with feet that make no sound upon the floors. We meet them at the doorway, on the stair, along the passages they come and go, impalpable impressions on the air, a sense of something moving to and fro. There are more guests at the table than the hosts invited, the illuminated hall is thronged with quiet, inoffensive ghosts, as silent as the pictures on the wall. The stranger at my fireside cannot see the forms I see, nor hear the sounds I hear. He but perceives what is, while unto me all that has been is visible and clear. We have no title deeds to house or lands, Owners and occupants of earlier days from graves forgotten stretch their dusty hands and hold in Mortmain still their old estates. The spirit world around this world of sense floats like an atmosphere, and everywhere wafts through these earthly mists and vapors dense a vital breath of more ethereal air. Our little lives are kept in equipose by opposite attractions and desires. The struggle of the instinct that enjoys and the more noble instinct that aspires. These perturbations, this perpetual jar of earthly wants and aspirations high, come from the influence of an unseen star, an undiscovered planet in our sky. And as the moon from some dark gate of cloud throws over the sea a floating bridge of light, across whose trembling planks our fancies crowd into the realm of mystery and night. So from the world of spirits there descends a bridge of light, connecting it with this, over whose unsteady floor that sways and bends, wander our thoughts above the dark abyss.
It's like that dog is bigger than you if he stands up. <laughs> It's like the movie Beethoven. Yes! <laughs> oh, I give you big hugs. I give you big hugs. You get big hugs. You I heard a story about this dog this morning. You did? This dog, usually very well behaved, but on one occasion, decided to stand up on two legs and eat a stick of butter off the counter. <laughs> a very rare occurrence, though. But on that occasion, I guess the <laughs> butter was too much of a reward. Just had to have it. Well, this is good tasting food. And yes, the dog was reprimanded <gasps> for that action. Quite a dog. Yeah. Aww. This is why I wear my good shirt so I can hang out with the puppies. <laughs> you can come hang out with us. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. <laughs> uh oh, he wants to come with you. I'll distract him while you get away. Yes. <laughs> A little bit of everything here. It's like they had an arrowhead making class here. How interesting. And a bow and archery yes. class. And I think we can exit this way. And this says it's the Monarch Way Station. This is a butterfly hangout. <laughs> we saw monarchs not too long ago. Yes. And here we have beautiful Somerset Pond. Get about our fishing pole. Let's do some fishing out here. A Catch a big one. Yeah, hey, you're still in my life. Well, everyone, we have had an incredible weekend here. Our intention was to perhaps find a ghost or two along the way, but instead we ended up making a friend or two this weekend. And yes, I'm talking about the dogs. Those two giant dogs, my goodness. When they stand up, <laughs> boy, if those dogs get any bigger, they're gonna stand up on two legs and start carrying us around. <laughs> my goodness. This has been a perfect miniature vacation for us. Great people, great places, great food. And I'm starting to understand why the mobsters like it here. Look, even if you're part of the world of crime, you still need a weekend off. And who could come here and not love it? And it has a feeling of seclusion. You're not too far away from the city, but you feel like you're, you're in another world. We also heard an absolutely wonderful story. The owners of Casa Somerset had a walking trail behind the casa uh, made that goes through the woods and they named it for 
the Peoria tribe as a memorial for them, and they even held a ceremony uh, to honor the Peoria people. It's just so nice. And we also went and visited the cemetery across the road. And I gotta tell you, if someone told me that they saw a ghost in that graveyard, I might even believe them. Because, my goodness, it got a little dicey there. Look, I say if the ghosts have taken over that cemetery, let them have it. Alright? Apparently that is Ghost World now, and they are running things, so that's just how it is. And we just can't thank you enough for being here. We've had a wonderful time! And we wouldn't mind coming back here again, because... Something tells me there may be more mysteries here in the Somerset Hills that are yet to be discovered. And we would love to do some more investigating. Because you never know. Alright everyone, thanks and have a great weekend.